Hi, I'm Dr. Philip Tangatu, and thank you very much for tuning in to another one of my humble little YouTube videos. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time to see one of my videos, my name is Dr. Philip Tangatwe and I'm a physician, I'm an acupuncturist, I'm a herbalist. And today I'd like to talk about one of my heroes. His style name is Zhang Ji and his courtesy name is Zhang Zhongjing. But he is better known to many as Zhang Zhongjing, the sage of medicine. So why is Zhang Zhongqing considered by many to be the sage of medicine? One of the most important figures in, for me, not just Chinese medicine history, but in medical history, in the history of the world, so to speak. Why? Well, most people know that uh, some of the stories about him, he wrote some medical books, but it's not just about the writing of the medical books. It's how influential these medical books are right now, up to now. And there are some stories about his inventing dumplings and some stories about how he supposedly could predict the future of a patient just by looking at their complexion. But I don't want to get into that right now. I want to get into what he wrote because that is the most important thing about Zhang Zhongjing. So, where did he come from? According to many sources, he came from what we know today as Nanyang County. Now, Nanyang County at the time, you know, late Han Dynasty, was an intellectual center. In modern terms, we might say it's a university town. Does that make sense? People went there, grew up there, and, you know, to hobnob with fellow intellectuals to discuss philosophy, to discuss theory, and so on and so forth. Now, Zhang Zhongjing came from a rich family, and I'm assuming politically connected. That's why he was able to get access to so many books. And legend has it that even as a child, he studied medicine informally, and later, I'm assuming, as an apprentice, to a certain Zhang Puzu, who I'm assuming... Uh, was probably an uncle of Zhang Tongjing. Anyway, so he took the imperial examinations and he was given the rank of filial and incorrupt. Compare that to government now where seemingly all you need to be is popular. I mean, who cares about filiality and being incorrupt, right? What's important is you get elected. Well, at the time, you had to pass examinations. Anyway, so he was assigned to be military governor of Changsha, which is uh, a little bit more south of Nanyang. And uh, true to form, you know, he wasn't the most eager government official, but down he went and tried to do a good job he did. Oh my God, I'm talking like Yoda. Anyway, so the problem is he really, really loved medicine. So... He still wanted to see patients. But as a government official, he was not supposed to enter the house of commoners. So how is he going to do that? What he did was he posted signs around his uh, city saying, Hey, uh, I'm a doctor. My office is open twice a month on the 15th and 30th of the month for consultation. So people went, as you can see here. And uh, what happened next? He became famous as a doctor. In fact, it is said that it's because of him that the idea of treating uh, patients, seeing and treating patients in a formal hallway apart from the houses of the sick. You know, because in the old days, they'd go to the houses of the sick and try to treat them there. But here, it was the patients who would go to Tang Tong Jing's office. Okay, does that make sense? Now, Zhang Zhongjing eventually wrote a book. Why did he write this book? Well, let's look at the, the, the time that he lived in. The late Han Dynasty was a period of civil war. 
so much so that the different warlords and, and you know, coalesced into different factions and let's put it this way if anyone has ever played the romance of the free kingdoms games or the dynasty warrior games you know what i'm talking about civil war civil war civil war so with war comes neglect of basic uh, health care by the government and spread of disease what kind of disease we're not sure some people think it's uh typhoid fever based on the symptoms so sometimes the term shanghan is translated in modern times as typhoid although it means cold damage so what did zhang Zhongjing do okay don't forget that at this time even up to recent times the best way to learn medicine was to apprentice yourself to somebody who will then teach you their secrets they didn't want to reveal these secrets to anyone else they just wanted to reveal it to trusted uh, apprentices now there's an inherent problem with that and I'll tell you what it is it's called lack of peer review yeah if I just keep on telling my secrets to a limited number of people how can other people check to see if said secrets work on a big time scale so with that you have the rise of quackery you have the rise of fake medicine then as in now we had that problem so Zhang Zhongjing wrote some texts what we have was preserved later on but we have some of the what he wrote and I'd like to take the time to read from the introduction from Zhang Zhongjing's introduction to said book the translation I'm reading from is going to be from uh, Craig Mitchell Feng Ye and Nigel Wiseman. So I thank you very much for this. Each time I read about Yue Ren entering the kingdom of Guo to examine patients and, in, and inspect the complexion of the Marquis of Qi, I always sigh with great emotion about his superb talents. It is bewildering that the learned men of our age never pay attention to medicine. Doesn't that sound familiar? So now people, even if they're studying for whatever field, they, they treat health as something that, oh, I can take care of this later. Uh, let me go on. I'm skipping some of the verses here. Instead, they only compete and pursue glory and power. They stand on the tiptoe of expectancy for influential officials and families of power diligently and untiringly devoting their efforts only to fame and profit so what they're saying is then as in now people in power only wanted more power they'd gladly spend time energy money to suck up to people who could give them that more power but time energy money on learning how to take care of your own health nah i'll just well we'll see what happens later so when they suddenly suffer illness, meeting misfortune and disaster, they tremble and shake. Abandoning their integrity, they lower themselves to grovel before magical healers. Despite their helplessness, sorry, declaring their helplessness, they attribute their misfortune to fate ordained by heaven. And with hands tied, they accept defeat. Magical healers, what does that sound like? It sounds like quackery. Because they're desperate, they're willing to believe anything. So you can see what Zhang Chongqing was feeling. He said, They transmute into weird beings and descend to roam in the underworld, weeping and sobbing to no avail. The whole world is stuporous. Nobody is aware. Nobody cherishes life. Making light of life in this way, why all talk of glory and power? And comes the part that, for me, really hits the mark. Zhang Tongjing says, My family was formerly large, counting over 200 members. But from the beginning of the Jian An reign, in less than 10 years, two-thirds have died, seven-tenths from cold damage. Lamenting the fall of our glorious past, 
and the untimely loss of so many lives that could not be saved, I have diligently sought the guidance of the ancients, widely connected the various remedies, and then consulted the Su Wen, Jiu Quan, Ba Shi Yi Nan, Yin Yang Da Lun, Tai Lu Yao Lu, and the Ping Mai Bian Zheng. Unfortunately, except for the Suwan, all of these were lost. But from this, he created what we now call the Treatise on Cold-Induced Disorders and Miscellaneous Diseases, otherwise known as the Shanghan Zha Ping Lun, totaling 16 fascicles. Although the book cannot completely cure all diseases, it provides the means to understand the origin of illnesses encountered. If the reader follows the materials collected, he should be able to work out or think out over half of all medical problems. I'm going to say this straight. What is the common characteristic among quacks? They will say they can cure anything. They can say they have a near 100% success rate. Even some will say they, they can cure anything. Well, I'm going to say this much. Did Jesus cure everyone in the Gospels? If, I'm assuming that this is a Christian audience, but even then. No. According to the Gospels, when the people had no faith, he couldn't work out cures. So these quacks are claiming a higher cure rate than Jesus. Zhang Zhongjing said, he didn't say, with this book, with my secrets, you can cure everything. No, he said, you can try to see how disease is transmitted. You can try to see how to approach diagnostics. And it is this tradition that continues until now. Every time a Chinese doctor classifies a disease according to an interior imbalance, he's following the principles of Zhang Zhongjing. The cold damage school was started early on. There have been other schools since. The spleen and stomach school, the cooling school, the warm disease school, and so many more. But ultimately, they all fall back on these texts. Wait, did I say these texts? Here's why. So it was civil war, right? The book would have been lost if not for Wang Shuha, who after the kingdoms were united into the Jin dynasty, compiled everything into what we call the Shanghan Lun and the Jin Kuei Yao Lue. So what this means is the treaties on cold-induced disorders and the essentials from the Golden Cabinet. So basically what Wang Shu He did was to take all the parts of the original book which would have been lost. Imagine this. All those bamboo strips would have been lost because of civil war. He collected them. He recognized how important these texts were. And he collected them. But the part on transmissible disease, which we call cold-induced disorders or cold damage, he compiled into one collection. While the others, the miscellaneous diseases, he compiled into what is now known as the essentials from the Golden Cabinet. In future videos, I'll talk more about these two books. So, what is Zhang Zhongqing's legacy? He is considered like a saint of medicine or a sage of medicine. The word Sheng has, uh, has some context of being like, you know, holy. For example, the same character, Sheng which we translate here as saint or sage. When we say Christmas, we say Sheng Tan or divine birth. So Zhang Zhongjing is considered like almost a holy man, a saint. In, in the West, we consider Hippocrates the father of medicine. But the medicine that Hippocrates practiced has nothing to do with the medicine we practice now. 
In fact, if you want to see the medicine that Hippocrates practiced, the easiest way is to look at traditional Arabic healing. Pro, uh, healing. Why? Because the writings of these Greek philosophers would have been lost if not for the Arabs. But that's another story. But Zhang Tongqing's legacy lives on up to now. Every time a Chinese doctor says, Okay, the disease is in the exterior, so we're going to have to prescribe a different set of herbs than if the disease is in the interior, even if the symptoms are the same. Shameless plug, I did a video on the eight principles of diagnosis. Please uh, feel free to look at that. But this is where it came from. The whole system of Chinese diagnostics comes in principle from Zhang Tongjing. He is considered one of the four great doctors in Chinese medicine history. And for that, even among those four, I sincerely think that Zhang Tongqing deserves a place higher than anyone else in Chinese medicine. Yes, there have been doctors who came before, Pian Chue, Zhang Kong, but it is Zhang Tongqing who took everything from the past, put it into a system that enables us to use it today. Of course, we should also thank Wang Shuhe because without Wang Shuhe, we wouldn't have this treasure. But remember, Zhang Tongqing. Just to give you an example of how great Zhang Tongqing is, many of the formulas now being used at the time of this writing in the People's Republic of China to treat COVID-19 are directly from Zhang Tongjing or adapted from Zhang Tongjing or from other later physicians who adopted Zhang Tongjing's earlier works. Everything boils down to Zhang Tongjing. Thank you very much. Uh, if you like this video, Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Keep well and keep safe.